the first question goes that do you recall when you heard metal music for the first time? I'm not really sure. It depends on how you define it. I think uh, my uncle was uh, heavily into ACDC, so I think that was like my fir one of my first meetings with metal music or heavy music uh, at all. I think. So, what made you become a musician, and what was like in heavier music that sort of like caught your attention first? I don't know. I mean, there's as I just mentioned, my uncle had this. Uh, ACDC albums that I was listening to and he actually gave me later the Razor Sedge cassette when it was like released in the early 90s anyway and that that awoke something in me this fucking album was so fucking brilliant and I never heard anything like it before and then I had some uh, friends and uh, older relatives again who uh, introduced me to heavier shit you know like I come from the north of Sweden that that is also like relevant here because you don't get so much shit up there you know, compared to Stockholm or the big city region, so uh, we took where we could, and uh, there, there was like a community already there. So we started. I just joined in and grew with it, I guess. So was it like tape trading and that kind of stuff? A little bit after the like general tape trading era. I think I'm a little, little bit younger than that. Uh, I'm turning 40 this year, so uh, it was just just a. A bit after that, like mid 90s or something like that, I came into this extreme metal with no oh, Swedish death metal, American death metal, you know, like this Florida style, and uh, and also the Scandinavian black metal wave was like peaking. So, were there like some specific like extreme metal bands that got you into like more heavier side of metal? Well, you have the obvious like. Our Maiden and uh, Judas Priest and those those bands, uh, but the first actual like what you classify as a black metal CD that I bought actually was a gift from my cousin. It was uh, Varathon, His Majesty at the Swamp. So uh, I came in from the Greek side of things, which I don't know. I always had like this weak spot for uh, for Greek Greek black metal. Okay. Since then. So what made you become a vocalist? <laughs> Were there like some like black metal vocalists that you admired when you started? N not really, but I, I come from a town with 10,000 people, and the next town is not bigger. Uh, you have to travel like three hours to get to a bigger one. Uh, so when we were teenagers, uh, we wanted to play music, and whoever had a drum kit or access to a drum kit, he was the drummer. The guy who had a guitar, he played the guitar. And uh, nobody owns a bass back then, so nobody played the bass either. But uh, so I ended up somewhere in between guitars and singing because those were the slots available. So I kind of filled that one, and then uh, more guitarists came around, so I developed more into singing. But I also play guitar still in uh, in my other band, Gra. So yeah. I never gave up on that. So I don't know. I'm not just a vocalist. I'm a, I'm a guitarist too. So did guitar came first and then the vocals or the opposite way or how did it happen for you? I don't remember. Actually, as I said, we were like three or four guys, like we want to form a band and we want to play this, the most extreme shit we can. And my cousin he had a drum kit because his older brother used to play drums, so he had like access to it. And my friend had a guitar and I also had this really shitty old guitar. So I think I started kind of both at the same time in a way and just improvising. We didn't have any YouTube videos how to do things and you know, <laughs> so we just have to like trial and error, maybe drink more, maybe drink less, you know, but then it worked. So when you started doing like more extreme type of vocals, yeah. were you like losing voice in the early days and did it take like long time to figure out the right technique or the like screaming and growling? Oh fuck yeah. I mean, as I just said, there, there were no YouTube, you know, you cannot watch tutorials, you know, so we were like basically bringing like a crate of beer to the rehearsal place and we would like drink and play and like imitate whatever bands we were listening to at the time, you know, and try to learn that that way, you know, like like everyone did back in the day before you had tutorials. So uh, yeah, of course, I fucked my voice so many times I can't even remember, but then at some point I, I, I don't know what to compare it with, but at some point things start to make sense and you start knowing how to how to dodge the bullets a little bit more, you know? And uh, then when you start bringing it on stage, you also start learning how to breathe and it's... I, I learned all this shit by myself, nobody ever taught me anything, so... And when so, a lot of people ask me, can you teach me? No, I can't, you just have to fuck, fuck yourself up <laughs> enough times to learn for, for yourself, you know? That's, that's the best advice I can give. And if you really want to do it, 
you will do it that way, you know. So were you first doing like covers and mimicking your idols as vocalists and then sort of figuring out your own way to do things or how did that happen for you? Well, kind of. We, we were like, we were writing our own music, but we were also doing some covers of whatever we could do. And it was, it wasn't just black metal, it was also like death metal stuff, like old carcass songs, Kimble Corpse, those kind of things. So I, I did like a mix, mix of like more growly death metal vocals and the more high pitched screams. But yeah, basically we was trial and error until we like felt that something didn't sound like shit. Was Diabolic last your like first proper band that you had? Yeah, I would say, I would say so. We we were active for a couple of years, not so many years, but it was in the nineties, up until early two thousands. And yeah, I would say that that was the first proper band that I had. Yeah. So when it comes to like black metal music, did you have any kind of like influences as a vocalist, somebody that you looked up to when you started doing music? That's a tough one. I I really don't. I really don't think I had so many black metal vocalists as as role models because I don't know because it, for me when I was when I was younger and I still think so that a black metal album is the composition of all the parts you know you can't just pick out when it's really really good you have like all the elements are there you have the great drummer you have the great everything uh, so I think for me vocalists that stood out were more like Rob Halford you know or uh, Bruce Dickinson. Uh, Jim Morrison, Johnny Cash, you know, different kind of singers that brought had really nothing to do with extreme metal, but they they brought they had like a completely different vibe to it, and they stood out as vocalists in a way that I think a black metal vocalist more belongs to the band. I don't know how to describe this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's weird either way, but yeah. yeah, yeah. So when you did like your first proper tour, how was it like vocal-wise? Did you do like many shows in a row? Did you had already the stamina to do like many shows in a row or was it a struggle for you? Well, the, the first like real long tour was with our funeral actually. We did, uh, was it in 2016 or something like that? We did a two European tour with Christian and we did a 90 minute set every night basically. Yeah. That was rough. I had to learn, learn a few things actually. Now I was yeah, that, that was like a crash course in uh, in how to uh, also remember to hold back. You know, you need you need to you need to figure out the set is not just the, the amount of songs that you put together. It's also like when am I gonna push a little extra? When when am I gonna hold back for leave room for the drums and guitars? And and it kind of connects to what I just said that with black metal you have to like be the whole band. You know? So uh, yeah, it was a, it was a crash course in. Uh, Learn, learning my strengths and weaknesses. So, are there like some specific foods or drinks that you have felt that they help you with the singing, or on the opposite way that you don't want to take before the show that you have felt that they harm somehow your vocals? Nah, I think you have to like find your own strengths. And the, the, the thing that affects me the most is sleep. If I sleep like shit, I'm gonna have a rough day. If I had a good good night of sleep, even with a cold, I can do a show pretty good, you know, without without any big big problems but yeah for me the sleep is the biggest enemy okay so do you have some kind of like warm-up routine before the show that you do or do you just go up on stage and warm up the voice during the show and has that changed through the years for you for me when I when I start preparing for a concert that, that I will actually do when we're done with this I'm gonna start with like changing my, my pants into the leather pants I'm gonna take the shoes on uh, and then I'm gonna start gradually transform is it's a too strong word I think but maybe slide into uh, what I'm gonna do you know slide into the performance and, and with that I have noticed that I become a bit more silent I'm, I'm not responding to a conversation in the same way I'm not interacting uh, because I'm starting to focus on the show I'm starting to focus on the set list I'm starting to focus on the mindset the mood so it's sort of like a character that I, comes in, in a way. Yeah, kind of. I have to leave some space for it at yeah, least. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's not like I'm like, well, no, I'm fucking zombie or something. No, not yeah. at all. But but I, I need this little space to like get into it. And uh, usually I walk in circles up behind the stage before going on, you know, like, and humming. Just to, to warm up the voice a little bit. I, I don't do this classical, like, 
voice yeah, exercises okay, or anything. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 I don't do that. But I do humming and I like do a little bit of shouting and just to wake the voice up a bit because then it will, with the first song, it will actually get into the, the right mo mode, I think. And it has been working like that for me since a long time. So, so obviously, you have released a lot of albums with Gra and now, now also a few albums with Dark Horror. You know? Are there like some specific albums that you could pinpoint? He's lying, he's <laughs> lying, the motherfucker's lying! <laughs> Are there like some specific albums that you could pinpoint where you have taken like a big step forward as a vocalist? Learn something more about yourself as a singer? I think every album is like that. Uh, I mean, w when I work on a new album, I always want to outdo myself, in a way. And it doesn't mean that I want to do more technical stuff. But I want to do something that gives me a new level of something, at least. Uh, I think the the latest Dark Funeral album, for example, is uh, has a lot of experimenting parts compared to the last one. You have this like different shades of the voice. I'm more doing some shouting parts, for example, uh, which are kind of new, and I felt very naked in the studio doing them. It's like awkward as fuck. Uh, but were you sort of like experimenting with the voice in the studio and that's how they came or...? No, it was actually on the demo stage, but we, we knew what we were gonna do, but okay. we didn't know how it's gonna sound until we were actually doing it in the studio, in the, when, when you have like everything properly recorded around it, you know. So, so that, 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 was, that was a challenge and also with the, with the latest Gra album, uh, as I was composing the music and the lyrics, I was trying to do something new there also, something a bit more... I don't know. I don't know how to describe this. Something more solid, something more... I think that the new girl album is very 80s in, uh, in how the music is written and how everything is put together. So that was also a challenge for me to do something that gave me that... I don't know, maybe going back even to the ACDC tape that I got from my, from my uncle, you know, you have some ACDC touches in there that probably only I hear. Nobody else know, can, can tell, but I know they're there. So for me, that this is a challenge to some, do something new. And, if I don't challenge myself, then it's no fun. And a lot of people ask me to do like guest things, but usually they want me to do something I already do. Okay, so I you're mean, not uh, like into that. There's no point. Yeah, 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 there's no point. It doesn't give me anything, and in the end, they will not give their band anything either. So, what were your like parents' reactions when they heard first that you joined? Or for the black metal band and started like screaming your lungs out. Well, I remember once I was in my early teens. My uh, my dad came into the, into my room and he was like, "What the fuck is this? Oh, this is the this is the source." So he's been going around the house looking for leaking pipes. Okay. Because uh, so I thought something is leaking somewhere. It's like <laughs> is this uh, the bathroom running or something? Uh, and I was listening to Transylvania Hunger. Okay, okay, so, so that sounded like that to him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it did. He, he was very condemning and uh, denounced that shit. Until uh, he saw some live footage, that, like a couple of years ago, he started seeing some uh, more festival footage, and he was like, people are actually going to this. And uh, he told me that even though it's not my music, I respect what you're doing because I see that you're actually doing something. It's, just, it's more than I thought it was, like screaming in a fucking room, you know? So, La last question, any kind of advice that you would like to give to a like, young metal vocalist who is just about to start the journey? Anything that comes into your mind? Well, I get this question all the time and I really don't have an answer. If you, want, if you really want to do it, you will do it. And if you, don't want, if, if you think you want to do it and you don't, they will show. And you will realize it after a while. So, I mean, for me it has been trial and error. Uh, I know there's a completely different ballpark today for for kids. They can they can do all these YouTube clips and uh, learn techniques here and there. But I don't know. If you want to do it, you will do it, and don't let anyone tell you how to do it. Find your fucking way. You know. Yeah, but that that's the only way to sound original. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot for this. No problem. Thank you.